Hello, I'm Wade Tomlinson, the Extension Corners Small Grain Specialist for Virginia. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, record this content uh, for inclusion in the Eastern Shore Winter Meeting this year. I wanted to uh, remind uh, the growers and the industry folks uh, that in attendance here about the importance of corn plant emergence, uniformity of that em emergence, and some of the tools and techniques uh, that we can use to improve that consistency of emergence. So I wanted to talk about some data collected by agents uh, in Eastern Virginia over the last several years, assessing the, the impact of date of emergence on final corn plant productivity. So on the slide that we're here, seeing here today, um, you'll see uh, some small corn plants there on the left, and then uh, an example of how the, how, the, how the trial was conducted on the right, where they uh, scouted the field beginning a day or two after planting, uh, and continued to scout that field for several days afterwards. And as each day passed and they went to the field at the same time every day, they found another plant had emerged. They put a flag beside that plant to mark it and exclude it from <clears throat> market as that day. So you can see in this example, all the red flags uh, were probably day one and the blue flags uh, that were plants that emerged on day two. <clears throat> so it was tracked periodically in that way. Um, some photo examples of how important this is uh, from a study here in Chesapeake, where uh, this is the ear size and uniformity from the plants that would have emerged on day one. Uh, these are those that came up on day two, and these that came up either on day three or after. So you see it's a small proportion, but they are much weaker ears and much fewer kernels than the ones that emerged on day two, uh, on day one and even day two. And you see some issues there in terms of uniformity and consistency in day in day two as well. The study from Virginia Beach uh, had you know, good consistent uniformity in emergence here uh, with uh, these ears coming out on day one, but you see immediately on day two and especially by day three, there was an immediate um, dramatic decrease in yield potential based on that. Uh, and I, I believe the situation here is that these plants that are a day, day or two behind are just non-competitive. So they're shaded out, uh, other plants root systems and, and leaves are developing faster, and so they just don't have access to the sunlight and water and nutrients. And in, in fact, they're probably negatively uh, competing against the plants uh, nearby. Finally, an example from Essex County, where we see uh, you know, what happened on day one uh, with fairly decent uniformity. And then these were marked as day two. So there's some missing kernels here, uh, one that just didn't pollinate at all. Then day three, you see a significantly smaller uh, ear in most of these. And then those that emerge later, obviously there's not much pollen left uh, for those. And so you're facing conditions of poor pollination and poor kernel set. So you see the penalties of, uh, of, of that late emergence. Here it is in terms of values. So you see um, over, uh, I believe 11 sites in Eastern Virginia, those that emerged, those plants that emerged on day one, or about 60% of the total. And if you look, the average yield for those plants was 148. Those that emerged one day later on day two, that's a fourth of the plants over all these studies. And some of them didn't had, they were under uh, stressful conditions. So you had some cases where we had really ideal emergence and some cases where we had some stressful emergence. But I think this really represents what we'd see in Eastern Virginia today. Um, but look, just day two, it's down over 40 bushels to the acre. Uh, so we went from 52% of the total yield down to 29. And then as you look here at day three and later, you're looking at uh, half and then just a tiny fraction. So you see the penalty associated with that. My point in sharing with, you, with th this with you at this time of year uh, is to remind you to do some simple things around planter maintenance. Make sure those opening discs are not worn. Make sure they're fitting smoothly. Make sure your closing wheels are working effectively. Make sure your down pressure springs are set how they should be consistently across the entire planter. Let's do all the things that we know will help improve this process and make a better result. And let's set it up now. There's really no cost to this uh, except for the time it takes to, uh, to do the right maintenance and do the checking. Um, but as you can see from the numbers here, it's absolutely worth it at the end of the day as you uh, calculate the returns on, on this investment of time here in the winter. So thanks again. I appreciate the opportunity uh, to talk to you and share your brief message. Thanks.